So it's that time of year again when these guys start showing up. Carpenter bees. They're all over the country, but especially among the lower states and up and down the eastern seaboard. I've got a friend whose house is crawling with them. It's more than I've ever seen in one place. She likes them because she's a gardener, but she asked if they could cause damage to the house. The answer is yes, but not as much as it might seem. Today I'm going to talk about how carpenter bees affect our homes and how we can deal with them. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So carpenter bees are these big fat bees that bore holes into wood. They buzz around a lot and seem scary, but for the most part they're fairly harmless. The males, which often have a pale spot on their heads, are the ones that get in people's faces. But the funny thing is, they can't even sting. They don't have stingers. Females do have stingers, but they almost never hurt anyone. This is because they're mellow and they're working most of the time. The females dig these holes that carpenter bees are famous for. This is where they'll lay their eggs and it's also where they'll hide out for the winter. You can find these holes in a variety of places around your house. Fences, fascia boards and siding, and frequently in railings and decks, as you see here. They usually like areas protected from rain, like the underside of things or the backside. You'll also see these piles of sawdust beneath their holes. It's amazing how much they can generate. The females dig this wood out by scratching at it with something sort of like a tooth. So, everyone asks, is this bad for your house? And the answer is, it might not be great, but it's not the end of the world. Carpenter bees don't infest like termites or ants do. In fact, they're kind of antisocial. They make their hole and then they isolate, but they're very generational. So what might be one or two bees one year can be dozens in five years. And they might continue adding to damage in a particular area. Here's how that happens. The holes themselves are bigger than they look. They tend to go in just about an inch, then turn and tunnel for several more inches. This is where the females will lay their eggs and supply pollen for infant bees. Those bees hatch in summer and then come out and start doing their thing. Now, carpenter bees tend to only live one year, but they can live for up to three years. And as I said, they'll get attached to a certain place. Carpenter bees know where other carpenter bees have been because of a certain pheromone that they release. They're literally drawn to the older holes where bees lived. And when old bees die, new bees might move right into this area. They'll claim the old hole for themselves and keep right on tunneling. Several bees may all use the same entrance, but they'll keep making different pockets for themselves. So what started as a five inch tunnel can allegedly wind up being several feet. And again, bees will just keep coming back to this area year after year, especially during fall when they need to get ready to hide out for the winter. This constant tunneling isn't necessarily good for any structure. The holes are unsightly, they might let other pests get into the house, and they can attract woodpeckers who come to try to eat the bees and their larvae. So what can you try to do to break this cycle? To some degree, it's up for debate. Bees are extremely important for our environment. They're pollinators and they help create eco-diversity in an area, and that includes carpenter bees. So I don't really believe in the wholesale killing of carpenter bees, especially since new ones are still gonna be attracted to your house once it's been tunneled. Also, a lot of pesticides that they sell to deal with them are very temporary. You'll spray them, usually around the holes, and they'll wear off in like two or three weeks. And then you have to do it again and again for much of the year. And newbies still might come back. Here are some better, more reasonable approaches, I think. The best preventive maintenance is to keep your house well caulked and painted. Bees like to start digging in little cracks and gaps. It helps form the tunnel. But they don't like digging painted surfaces. They really prefer unpainted, unstained, or even untreated wood. Make sure the underside of your railings are painted and be sure that you don't have any raw wood surfaces around your house. Caulk all visible gaps. That's just for starters. If you do see them moving in, you can try filling in holes with wood filler, but I've seen them dig it right out before and try to get right back in that same tunnel. I've read that it's better to put a little tin foil or steel wool in the hole than caulk over it and paint over that. They won't want to redig that stuff and they might forget about the hole altogether. But do this in the fall when new younger bees are out and mature bees haven't returned for winter. The hole is most likely to be empty then. If you do it in spring or summer, they're just going to dig it out immediately or dig another way into the same tunnel. A plug, a good paint coat, and good timing can disrupt the whole memory process. You can also consider getting carpenter bee traps, which lets you catch them and I guess kill them or relocate them. But they also have bee hotels. I bought this one for my friend. It gives them pre-drilled holes that they might be interested in moving into rather than eating up your railings. 
But as I said, it's best to fill old holes and possibly hang one of these somewhere nearby during fall. See if it gets any inhabitants. This way you'll still have bees for your yard and garden. If you really just don't want them around, I've heard a trick that a lot of people swear by. Hang a gray grocery bag stuffed full of other grocery bags in the area. It looks like a hornet's nest and carpenter bees are afraid of hornets, so they avoid that spot. That's easily the cheapest option to try and I'm curious to hear if anybody's had success with it. So just a couple ideas to try there, but again, carpenter bees don't account for a lot of damage, not even when they've been there quite a while. Keep vulnerable areas well caulked and painted. If you can deter them from entering the structure, that's your best bet. Because otherwise it can be really hard to break the cycle and keep new generations from coming back. I'll link some bee hotels and traps down below if you'd like to try them. I'm curious how this one is going to work out next year when the bees get very active again in early spring. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.